Hello, I'm Brent Ferris from the Bearded Man Studios, and in this one we're going to go over creating the entity class and expanding the player class just a little bit. So instead of our header files, let's create a new header. Let's call it ENTITY for entity.h. And let's create our CPP file. Let's call it CPP. CPP. So uh, we're creating this entity because we want a nice tree structure. We want everything to spawn from every object in our game, whether it's a barrel or gold or, 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 or a player or a character or a tree. We want it all to come from this entity class so that we have this supreme overlord, if you will, uh, of everything. And so um, if we gave the entity class health, then everything would have health and everything would be destructible. So let's, uh, let's just make a bare bones entity class that we can uh, derive character from. Uh, so, so let's uh, begin with our, our oh so traditional um, things at the top, our defines. Let's just copy this whole one and paste it over here to make it faster. And we'll just anti-ty underscore h and prevent circular dependencies. Create a class called ENTITY for entity. I'm sure you've gathered that because it says entity. And let's make a public constructor um, entity and a public destructor entity. And let's go over to our character.h. Let us include in our entity and let's derive from entity and inside of our character.cpp let's make sure that we derive our constructors and <laughs> I wonder let's make this name actually let's give everything a name so let's delete this, uh, let's, yeah, delete this name one. Let's put a colon in TFTI and pass in the in. So inside of our entity class, let's make another constructor, ENTITY, with a string in. And to have a string there, we need to include string. Um, and now inside of our entity CPP, let's include the entity header file, do entity, entity, uh, do another entity, entity, string n. This name is equal to n. We haven't set up the name variable yet, but we'll do that next. Entity uh, destructor. Um, and so we're going to copy a few functions from over here. We're first of all going to copy these two at the bottom from the character.cpp, the get name and set name. We're going to put that into the entity file. And then we're going to cut out the name from this protected field in the character file and put that into a protected field inside of um, our entity. So now our entity can take care of uh, the name field and let's make sure we're using namespace std. So remember we also copied these two functions over. Uh, let's rename character with entity and let's copy these functions get name down here. This returns a string and let's copy our set name down here so that we have our uh, little prototypes for it. And let's go back into our character.h and delete out those two functions from inside of there. Um, oops, we forgot to do a public here. There we go. Now we can go ahead and build and get our success. Oh, success. So now we have derived our character from our entity and we can do a little bit of cleanup because 
Uh, this doesn't use string anymore. We can get rid of string. We can get rid of using namespace std, and we can get rid of the IO stream because we haven't really used that inside of the character.h. We can build that out. And there we go. So let's go back here, and we should be able to run it. And there we go. Everything is still working. We've created our entity class. So I said we we're going to add a little bit to the player, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Inside of the player class, uh, the player is going to have, um, let's say, he has a uh, some money. He has money. Yeah. So let's say uh, private. Let's make a private variable here for uh, float cash. Let's make it an int. Int cash. And let's go inside of our player CPP. Let's make his cash equal to 50 to start off with. So he starts off with some some cash in there. Um, and we need to be able to get his cache, use his cache, and add to his cache. So let's make a few, uh, a few uh, functions here. We'll do a int get cache, a void um, add cache, int c for cache. Let's make it amount. And we'll do a void. Um, use cache int amount. So let's jump over to the CPP and let's create player dot uh, get cache. Let's return the int on that. So now we're going to return his cache. So we just say return this cache. Now let's do the void player add cache int amount this cache plus equals amount and let's get rid of some money void player uh, use cache int amount and this cache minus equals amount so now we have functions for adding and subtracting cache. So let's make sure they work. Let's go back to our main. And instead of displaying health here, let's get his cache. Dot get cache. Hit F5. And uh, you can see that it is some crazy number, and we have to figure out why. Ah, um, notice what constructor we're using here. We're using the player constructor uh, passing in a string. If you recall, when we go back to our player constructor, all we did was set the cache inside of our first constructor. So if we bring that cache down into our second constructor and press F5, there we go. We can see his cache is now 50. So let's test out our function. Let's just duplicate this line a couple times. And in between, let's say uh, p dot use cache 25 and p dot add cache 100. So it should go down to 25 here and then 100 uh, and 25 there. And let's make sure we're doing our end lines uh, at the end of each one of these so it looks nice when we look at the data. F5, uh, pfft, I spelled end line wrong. And L, okay, there we go. He has 50 cache to start off with. We use 25, he has 25, we add 100, he now has 125 cash. So technically, we kind of got a little game going on here. We're adding some cash, we're taking some cash from the player. Um, we've got all this inheritance going uh, quite a bit. So let's, let's do something with it in the next video. See you then.